I am Nick, the Director of Events for Mysterious Galaxy, and today we have the wonderful Clotilde Ewing uh, here to discuss her latest picture book, Stella and the Mystery of the Missing Tooth. Hi, Hi. Clotilde. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. For those of you who don't know, uh, she is the Vice President of Strategic Communications for the Chicago Community Trust. She served in Mayor Rahm Emanuel's administration as the Chief of Strategic Planning and for Vice President Obama and for sorry President Obama's re-election campaign, leading its con, uh, constituency press efforts. It's kind of late here. Reading's tough, right? <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. Her goal is for people to see more children of color in books that are not primarily defined by race or struggle, but by belonging and joy, which is also why we have the Stella series here. <laughs> so if you haven't yet purchased any of your copies of Stella and the Ministry of the Missing Tooth, we also have some copies of um, the first book, Stella Keeps the Sun Up. Yes, I want to make sure I had that right. Um, we also have some wonderful signed book plates that Clotilde has been gracious enough to send us. We also have a wonderful bookmark and a cute little pencil from the first book. All these can be yours if you order or if you come into the store and get them while supplies last. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and be the wonderful person who gets to turn the pages as Clotilde reads. If you have any questions that you want to ask afterwards, you can go ahead and submit those underneath on the ask a question button and I'll get to those shortly. Otherwise, take it away. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you again. And I'm really excited to read Stella and the mystery of the missing tooth for you all. Okay. I just got to show this off. Oh my gosh. Those are all those missing teeth right there. I know. Isn't that so cool? <laughs> so this is called the end paper. So they've done an, an incredible job. And, and as you mentioned, I'm Clotilde Ewing and I, I had the pleasure of writing the Stella series. Uh, for those of you who are on the phone, I'm I'm an author. An author is the person who, who puts the words together and writes the stories. And then the illustrator, the illustrator. This, this series is illustrated by Lynn Gaines. She is amazing. Uh, she is from Cleveland, Ohio, which also happens to be my hometown. And she is the woman who brought this all to life. Uh, so we want to give her her props as well. So Stella and the Mystery of the Missing Tooth. <clears throat> our dedications i dedicated this to my parents who who've always been who's, who've always believed in me and encouraged my dreams oh my goodness okay here we go my teacher says i have an overactive imagination does that mean it moves around a lot can my imagination do cartwheels how about backflips My best friend Roger and I can do giant star jumps. We do everything together. Today, we are going to meet my second best friend, Owen, at the museum. I can't wait to see Sue the T-Rex. Sue and I like to have steering contests. I have to practice, though. She always beats me. <laughs> Owen and Sue are best friends. They're planning a trip to outer space together when he turns 14. He loves to visit her at the museum. But when Roger and I get there, Owen is already leaving. I gotta go, I lost my tooth, he yells. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh dear. How do you lose a tooth? Roger asks. I have no idea. I've lost a light up ball, I've lost my left shoe. I've even lost my super cool unicorn lunchbox, but I've never lost a tooth. I hope Owen has a picture. 
when my neighbor lost his dog, he posted pictures of her on every mailbox. Maybe Owen could offer a reward for his tooth, Roger says. I could help, I add. I have $4.07 and a light-up yo-yo. I ask a group of school kids if they've seen Owen's tooth. One second it was there, and the next, poof, it was gone, I tell them. See if you can find the tooth fairy, one girl says. That's who took my brother's tooth. We search the whole museum and find four pennies, one silver gum wrapper, a red crayon, a toy ambulance without a siren, a sparkly rock, but not a single fairy. What if Owen didn't lose his tooth, I say to Roger? What if it was stolen? What if the tooth thief takes ours, asks Roger. We have to keep our mouths shut forever, I say. <laughs> How are we supposed to count when we play hide and seek, Roger cries. Then what about pizza night? We need to find out what happened to Owen's tooth so we can keep ours. We begin with our friend, Sue, the T-Rex. Sue, you may be the last dinosaur who saw Owen's tooth, I say. What happened? Also, what's your secret? You still have your teeth after 60 million years. Is it because no one can reach your mouth? Or your teeth too heavy to steal? And way too big to hide in a backpack? Just as we are getting somewhere, a lady heads our way. Do you want to know more about Sue? The lady asks. I nod. I do not open my mouth. She's coming for our teeth, Roger cries. Dinosaurs like Sue could be as tall as 20 feet and grew new teeth every two to three years, she says. Isn't that cool? What happened to their old teeth? Sometimes they broke, sometimes they fell out. Then a new one would grow in, she says. Owen is part dinosaur. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. I consider the possibilities. Number one. There's a tooth thief on the run. Perhaps the thief is a fairy. Number two, Owen did not lose his tooth. He forgot where he put it. Number three, Owen is half boy, half dinosaur. Those are all legitimate questions. Agree. After the museum, we go to Owen's house. Owen. We've been trying to find your tooth all day, I tell him. I have a question. Ever have a taste for Triceratops for dinner, I ask? <laughs> Open wide, please. I need to investigate. There's something coming out from that hole, I scream. I think it's another tooth. Owen's a dinosaur boy. I am not a dinosaur boy, Owen exclaims. My baby tooth was wiggly and it fell out. An adult tooth will grow in its place. Does this mean we will lose our teeth one day, Roger asks? Yep. You seem happy about this. Well, there's no tooth thief. And when our baby teeth fall out, we will officially be grown ups.
I know the perfect place to display them. <laughs> awesome. Right next to Sue. And then if you zoom in, there you go. And then um, some of the kids who I've talked to already have the copy of the book. They, they love this part, Stellodactyl Tooth, Rogersaurus Tooth, and then they can think of their own names, like what they would name their tooth uh, when, when they lose a tooth as well. So that is Stella and the mystery of the missing tooth. <laughs> and I love the little tooth fairy that's right there. I know. Admiring I know. them or applying to steal them. I don't know. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Thankfully, they're in this beautiful case and on a pedestal. So she would have a hard time, but I know I love that drawing. I know. I, I love the security drawing. watches out. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that they've got cameras all over, both both high and low. <laughs> so I must ask, what prompted you to write the Stella series? Yes. Well, you've talked about all the the, the jobs that uh, I've had, and uh, though I don't consider it a job, one of the most important roles that I have is as a mother. I've got two children, uh, Stella and Jackson. Stella is eight. Jackson is just weeks away from being seven, and I wanted to fill their rooms with books. Uh, I wanted to fill the rooms with books when they were born, books that reflected their joy, books that reflected the community that we live in, the world that we live in. And I was struck that there weren't as many books as I hoped there'd be that reflected that joy. Uh, and then about five years ago, I came across an article um, written by my now editor, Deneen Milner, uh, that was titled, She Wants More Than MLK at Bedtime. And that article really gave word to what I was thinking and feeling as I struggled to find books for my kids. And it talked about the fact that there were so many books out there. Um, well, number one, there wasn't enough diversity in children's literature, but so often the diversity that did exist, uh, it, was, it was about our history. It was about excellence. And those books are incredibly important, um, but it's equally important for our kids to see themselves in, in books that are about joy, books that are just about kids being kids. And so I decided I wanted to try and do something about that and came up with Stella. <laughs> so how many more adventures do you think Stella is going to be going on? Oh boy. Well, I hope a lot, at <laughs> least two more, at least two more adventures. And I hope more beyond that. Uh, I feel like there is a lot more for her to do and a lot more adventure ahead. Uh, thankfully, my kids give me some ideas from, from time to time. I uh, gotta love kid logic. Like in this book, the idea that, okay, well, once I get, once I get an adult tooth, then I'm an adult. I'm an adult. How about it? That's how um, it works. <laughs> exactly. Or in the first book, Stella keeps the sun up. The idea, well, if I can just keep the sun up, then I'll never have to go to bed. Uh, so there, there's some more, there's some more adventures ahead. So when you're writing the books, do you, speaking of your children, do you uh, like to read to them and basically like see what their takes on it? Um, do you use them for a little bit of like their, your alpha testers? I do. I do. And they're a tough audience. Sometimes they're a tough audience. And I have to say, Lynn and the job that Lynn does in bringing it to life, the laugh lines, I get a little bit more once the pictures are there. Um, but I do, I read drafts to them. They come up with ideas. I usually try and keep a notebook with me just in case something comes to me in a moment or something sparks an idea. Uh, but they've, they've been great. So with all the hats that you wear from your day job to your, you know, full time at, you know, being mom job and this, where do you find the time to, to write books? Yes. Well, thankfully that little notebook is really helpful. So if something comes to me, I, I, I jot it down, but I usually try and write at night. Uh, once my kids go down, which I will say we are not winning the sleep, uh, the sleep, wars in our house at the moment. But um, when the kids go down, I usually try and start writing. So usually between nine and 10 or so. And uh, then on the weekends when I can. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take a question from our virtual audience. Um, so what is the biggest inspiration for creating stories? I know you have mentioned some of it, but are there any other inspirations that you draw from that you feel like you need to put into book form? 
Mm, I would say, I, honestly, kid logic and kid wonder. Uh, that, that's something that we, we lose as adults, the wonder. And I think if I am, a, every time I'm able to capture that, I have such a huge smile on my face because I think that if we can, we as adults can reconnect with that, if we can help encourage that among kids, wow, the better off we'd all be. So just trying to capture that whenever I see it and whenever I feel it myself. And then maybe in the future, I'll be looking back going, oh, the things my kids thought of. Uh... <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And remind them of that too, right? As they get older. Exactly. All right. Uh, another question we have is, what is the process like to write a picture book? Mm. Kind of there. Yes. Okay. So I, I have that notebook that I mentioned, and then I have a number of different drafts of stories that I've started. Some that... I had to take a break on because I just couldn't figure out how to keep it going or how to end it. Uh, some that are closer to the end, some that are closer to the beginning. I think probably the two biggest pieces of advice that I would say that have been helpful for me, number one, to keep writing, <laughs> keep writing and keep exercising that muscle. You know, sometimes it'll be 50 words that you can get out. Sometimes it'll just like keep coming to you and it's a thousand words that you get out one night, um, but keep going every single night. And, and, and also try and find your, your people, try and find your people who are on this journey with you. Um, one of the, the best things that I did was join SCBWI, which is the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. And I met incredible writers who were also on this journey of, of trying to get published. And we would show each other our work and critique it and cheer each other on. Um, so both of those things have been really helpful for, for me. Um, yeah, I'd say that. Great. All right. Another question we have is, uh, has the process made you want to branch out into other genres of writing? Mm, that's a great question. Uh, I would say this. I had mentioned before, I've got two children, Stella and Jackson. I cannot branch out of this genre before I get a Jackson series going. So <laughs> I will I will be in picture books uh, for, for a while so that I can get both Stella books and Jackson books out in the world. Uh, and then after that, who knows? I think that there is uh, a lot more adventure left with, with both of these stories. Uh, so whether it's in book form, whether we're able to branch out to animation or product, who knows? We'll see. I think that the sky's the limit. <laughs> All right. This is a cute question. I love it. What is your favorite piece of kid logic you've heard? Mm. I honestly do think it's the sun idea. I think it's the sun idea. That is an idea that um, was inspired by my children. Um, and the idea that if only it doesn't get dark, then, you know, we, we can, we can stay up. Like why, why would we have to go to sleep? And it wasn't quite that linear, but we got there to where they were, you know, where their mind was going. Um, but there is, there's kid logic with everything from that to pushing bedtime, you know, while I'm, while I'm, almost seven. That should be my bedtime is 10 o'clock now because it was 730 when I was six. And, you know, how do you get there? I'm not quite sure. Um, but it, it totally makes sense to them in the moment. And, uh, you know, you try and both honor that and talk through it to get to where you, you need to get to. And you have to use your own, your own a little bit of adult logic to go, okay, how, how did they get how did, from right. there? to hear it makes sense to you i know it makes sense to you but why why but <laughs> right right Unraveled. right but it makes complete sense in that moment it's like, all right now, what is an important personal trait that you wanted to instill into stella curiosity curiosity i think that that is um a wonderful trait uh my children go to a montessori school here in chicago and mm -hmm um that spirit of always learning that spirit of always asking questions and trying to figure out the world i think that that's a, a wonderful trait 
Now, you do work with an illustrator, as you mentioned. Yes. And uh, your illustrator for this one is Lynn Gaines. And for the yes. Stella book, right? Exactly. Lynn Gaines, she is the illustrator for the Stella series, which I feel very blessed and very happy about. So since there are two people, one a writer and one an illustrator, how is that uh, collaboration, uh, since it takes both of you a little bit right. more for a book, but ultimately two of you to make this book? Yes, yes. Well, I mean, I've got to give so much credit to Lynn because after I write the story, then I really do pass it off. I pass it off to the publisher and then the publisher passes it off to Lynn. And so Lynn sees these words on paper and figures out, okay, what does Stella look like in this moment? Hmm, where should the tooth fairy show up and what is she going to look like? And if you see, you know, the tooth fairy here with these beautiful Bantu knots, I mean, that was, that was Lynn's idea. Everything from the, the bag that she carries to the hairstyle that she wears. And, uh, you know, I just feel so lucky. In the first book, um, Stella Keeps the Sun Up, uh, Stella had on this, like, amazing t-shirt and tutu and tube socks and ballet shoes. And I was like, oh my God, right on. Cause you don't have to choose. You can do this and that. And uh, you know, this one as well, just knocked it out of the park. So there's a lot of trust that the writer puts into the, puts into the illustrator for sure. Um, but Lynn knocked it out of the park. So did you initially for Stella Keeps the Sun Up, did you initially have to give um any like key things that you envisioned Stella to look like for Lynn to develop or you're like okay let me know I, I had that. a couple of very small art notes for the first book that I cannot even recall what they were at mm -hmm. one point um but she 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 did it she did it meaning she came up with Stella she came up with the beauty she came up with the hair and the color and colors of her outfits and everything. I mean, for me, I'd say the the what was very important is that Stella was a little black girl uh, and that she was a joyous black girl. Um, aside from that, I wanted Lynn to do her thing. Wonderful. All right, I especially love this question. What were your favorite books growing up and what were our Stella and Jackson's? Uh, other oh. than yours, of course. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, so I would say I loved Corduroy growing up. I loved the Berenstein Bears. And then I loved the Babysitter's Club, and Nancy Drew and, and books like that. Um, it's really interesting now to see my own kids who love, love, love Ramona Quimby. I mean, cannot get enough of Ramona Quimby. We listen to the audibles of Ramona every time we're in the car. Uh, so Stella's now reading the Babysitter Club books. Uh, Jackson loves dog man, cat kid. Oh gosh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Magic Tree House, that age for sure. Um, love Ryan Hart, the Ryan Hart series. Uh, Stella and I were reading, really like her. Uh, Kena Ford is a great one um, that we, we read together. Sadly, that series was only three books. We love to find series that we can, we can keep going. Um, with but those are those are the hot books in the house and Stella and I are actually reading uh Harry Potter number five together at the moment oh wonderful yes the four got a little dark so I'm <laughs> I'm worried that five might be a little dark it caused for some nightmares at bedtime so we need to figure out the schedule it's definitely one of those series that it grows with the kid you know what I mean so it was growing with his audience, but it, it definitely goes from middle grade to YA real halfway through. Real quick. Yeah, I did not get that memo. I did not get that memo. It's like, it's like oh, oh gosh, we're too far in. We might have to wait a little bit for this next one. Right, for you. right, right. We were a little bit far in at the moment. But um, yeah, those are those are the books that, that I'd say we're reading together. And then I don't know if you can see it, but we've got, got a ton of picture books behind me. We've got picture books all over the house um, that my husband and I will just read, my kids will read, we'll read together. Um, and those books are just fun as well. You can read in one sitting. I think they're, you never get too old for a picture book. What are some recent picture books in like the last five years, would you say, 
or Goodreads, especially from authors of color? Mm, okay, so I, I'm really liking The Smallest Spot of a Dot right now. Uh, that's by Lindsay Davis and, and Michael Tyler. Um, the, year, the Year We Learned to Fly, Jacqueline Woodson. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm switching a word in there right now. Um, My Name is a Song. I love that one. Fly is another great one. Uh, trying to think of others that um, have also been written by Black authors. Ramona uh, Yeah, Smallest Spot of a Dot. Okay, good. You put that in. Um, I'd have to turn it on right now. Let's see. Well, I'll, we also, like here in the store, uh, one fan favorite, especially amongst our owner's kids, uh, is Anzu, Anzu the Great Kaiju by Shum. I don't it's, know that one. It's a it's a cute basically a kaiju is like a a giant monster and uh, he doesn't want to like destroy things. He just wants to be peaceful and enjoy life. So he's the misfit in the family. Okay, so, I'm gonna Anzu, have to Anzu, check Anzu that the one great out. Kaiju. Okay, I will have to check that one out. I don't know that one. I will check <laughs> it out for sure. I like the title. Yeah, and then the his next book, Benson's next book, uh, Anzu. Anzu, the great listener, just came out this January too. Okay, awesome, awesome. I, I'm, I'm a book lover. <laughs> yeah, I said fly as well, right? Um, that one's just a, a different one, fly, F L Y. But I can, I can get you guys a list. Um, and unless we have any other questions, my last question for you is, what advice would you have to um, any other people who want? to write in picture books, to, to get their stories out there, to hopefully uh, read to the next generation? Get started, get started. Um, I, I think that sometimes we wait for what we think might be the perfect moment or the perfect story to come to us. And I don't know if there ever is a perfect moment. I, I don't think there was ever a perfect moment for me. I think if it's something that you wanna do just get started and maybe the first day you write one day it happens you know it's like who knows who knows but you just have to start the process and I really do think it's like working a muscle you start that first day and maybe you get 20 words maybe you get 100 words that next day maybe you only get three but you start in the, you start getting in the routine and in the habit, just like exercise, just like anything else. And it will eventually come to you. And I think you need to think about it as a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. Even if you've been thinking about this story for 10 years, it might take you another 10 years to get to the point where you're ready to show it to somebody. But if you don't start, you'll never get to that point. Um, so I would say get started. <laughs> And I, th I think that can apply to many different things. If, mm -hmm. if you don't do, you're never going to do it. If you don't start, you're never going to do it. And, you know, unless you're really gifted, it's not going to be perfect right. at first. You got to keep working at it. Exactly. 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 But I, I, I can't wait to read more stories out in the world. So please get started so that I can, I can buy more. <laughs> Absolutely. We definitely need more stories in the world, especially from wonderful authors like yourselves who have their own backgrounds and their own stories that they need to share that haven't really been touched upon. Um, yeah. Clotilde, thank you so much for doing this. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you of for course. having me. And uh, I, I would say stay warm, but you're in, you're in California. I'm in Chicago. So <laughs> <laughs> we might get rain again. So we'll see. Okay. All right. Stay dry. Stay dry. <laughs> thank you everyone for joining us. And don't forget, you can get your own copy of Stella and the mystery of the missing tooth and or Stella keeps the sun up. We have some wonderful signed book plates and swag while supplies last. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye.